superheroes. Uh, right, so I guess we'll make some pupusas. So pupusas are basically uh, a fried corn fritters. The one that we're gonna make today is actually uh, a combination of refried beans and uh, cheese. We're gonna do a, a, a refried red bean, uh, which is very common in uh, El Salvador. Uh, and I think the, the combination just really works well together. I found that if you really char the hell out of an onion, you get that really intense flavor and it almost becomes meaty. Um, it just feels very substantial. It plays well that with the creaminess of the beans. So we're gonna actually like break up this onion. I want to essentially char the petals of this onion. Like, and I mean really char. It's gonna be really messy. It's gonna make a lot of smoke, but it's definitely worth it. So now I'm gonna go to the stove and fry this onion. You want this to be really, really hot. I'm gonna put the oil in and we're gonna wait. Practice sandwich? What is that? Practice. Oh, breakfast. Wait, I thought you just. You just had a smoothie. I thought you were not. What's? He's a growing boy. I had a smoothie and now Whatever. I don't. I don't understand Morocco and his eating habits anymore. I'm sorry. Give me a pupusa and then I'll stop eating other stuff. I, I'm gonna feed you. Like right. clearly, you Come need on, some more nourishment. In here, bud. You're like wasting away. God. He is getting thin. I know. Like I'm fine. I'm, I'm gone fine. a few this months is not and look, turning he's into like... a friggin' after school special. Alright. That is the sound that you want to hear. They're gonna dance around. And you're gonna wanna pull them, but don't. And you also wanna stand back because they will pop. You want it much darker than that. I can stand back again. You can actually like uh you can get a, a, a lid to a pot and then just use it as a shield. <laughs> Basically, this is this oil that we're uh, that we're charring this onion in is going to be used to refry the beans after we puree them. All right, that's that's kind of what we're looking for. We want really really char. Onions can actually take um, a lot of char. It's going to add a really nice depth and richness to the beans. These are small red beans. So these are small red beans. Um, depending on the brand that you get, they're gonna have different names. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as Salvadorian. Sometimes they're just Latin American. Not drained, we're gonna use the, the liquid in there. Um, the, the liquid is actually going to add flavor, a little bit of salt, and some of the viscosity um, that you wanna have as you're blending this. We want this to be pretty smooth. Start low, and then you can increase the speed. If your blender is straining, you can add a little water. This is a quarter cup of water. It's just gonna help it, the, uh, the blender do its job. So even if you have to put more than a quarter cup because your blender, if your blender can't take it, it's fine. It looks like one of Morocco's smoothies. Mm. So now we're going to refry the beans in the oil that we charred the onion in. Ooh, yes. We just want to cook this down for about five minutes. We just want it to thicken it up, get rid of some of the moisture content, concentrate the flavors. You might need to season this. It's really going to depend on the brand of bean because some of the beans tend to be uh, a little salty and also we use the liquid. Um, so just season to taste, but season after you've evaporated a lot of the liquid. Because if you season now and then concentrate the flavor, you might end up with very salty beans. You don't need to stir it that often, but you know, just give it a good scrape every now and then to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom. So you can see it's thick, but it's not quite the consistency we want. There's not a lot of salt in that at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and salt it. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat off and just let it sit in the pan. Um, it's gonna get a lot thicker than this as it sits and that's totally fine. So now we really are gonna make the dough. Okay, so this is a super simple uh, masa or dough, uh, pupusa dough to make. Um, so this is maseca, which is dried, uh, nixtamalized corn. It's important that you actually mix it. So you can do it in a stand mixer, which I find to be a lot easier, but you can actually also do this by hand. Um, it's important to actually get in there and really knead or mix the dough quite a lot. You're not developing any gluten, but you are hydrating the corn and you are also pulling some of the oils out of the corn and that will emulsify with the water and actually then create some structure and hold everything together. 
And then you want to start on low and you might even need to pulse it just to make sure it doesn't splatter at you. You don't need to like, you know, increase the speed to anything crazy. But you can see how wet and loose this is right now. And then you're just going to let this sit and it's going to, uh, what's going to happen is the individual grains of the masa are going to swell up and it will start to hold its shape. It's thickened up a lot and it's still a little bit tacky and sticking to my hands. But as it sits and the corn sucks up all that water, you'll get less of this. Let it sit uncovered for 15, 30, whatever the hell, whatever you want. I'm so in love. What's that? Uh, this is the salsa roja. Yeah, for the cook for, and the curtido. These are the cuchumam. You want to taste? Yeah. Can we taste? I'll put a pause on my cereal. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the accoutrements for the uh, pupusas. So um, whenever you're served pupusas, you always, always have a salsa roja and the curtido. The curtido is basically a slightly fermented cabbage slaw situation. It has a little bit of heat, um, not not too much. I tend to, you know, put a little more because, you know, whatever. It's me. Because I'm me. And you just let it sit and ferment. Uh, it's At room temp. Room temp. I mean, minimum 24 hours. I like mine to go four to five days. Oh. Um, after four or five days, you probably should refrigerate it, but How it just long gets... How long is this one gone? This is just 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. That's so good. It's so good. I yeah. love the oregano. Yeah. I'm not a big oregano fan, but this feels really? like a great place it's to have it. Mexican oregano. Yeah, like obviously. It. Spicy. And <laughs> yeah. this is, what's in the Roja? The secret ingredient here, and this is used a lot in, in Latin American countries, chicken bouillon. Yeah. So you, a square? Um, or granules. Um, and you basically just puree everything together and then fry it until it gets this consistency. So. The bouillon. Yeah. <laughs> it adds this weird, like, umami. There, Whoa, sorry, I'm kind of into that. <laughs> Do we say umami a lot? I, apparently, yeah. I said it once yesterday. One and like, too many you know, umamis. Yeah, the umami police came and That's got me. Yummy. So this is the consistency you want. So we just let them cool down in the pan, and you can see it like it reduced. This is like a nice paste-like consistency. So I'm just gonna scrape this into the bowl. So you want a really nice melting cheese. You can use quesillo. It's probably a little more common. If you go into a, a Latin American grocery store, you can actually find the Salvadorian cheese that's typically used for um, the pepusas, but no, no, the beans are cool, so it's not gonna melt. I mean, if you put the cheese in there um, while the beans were hot, it would have melted. But right now, the beans are, are thick and, and room temp, so nothing's gonna happen. Now we're gonna make our lube. Uh, so this is actually a, a technique that I saw um, some women at one of the diners that we went to uh, who were making the pupusas that they use, they don't really use gloves. What they did is they just took some water and some vegetable oil and they just put the two together and then right before they started forming the, uh, the pupusa, they just stuck their hands in this, kind of rubbed it around and then nothing sticks to their hands. So it's definitely a trick that I wanted to include in the recipe. All right. <laughs> Still rolling. Still rolling, okay. So now we're gonna form the ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scoop this out. Basically what we're going for is 12 equal sized balls, but ice cream scoop is actually one of my favorite kitchen tools because I use it for cookies, I use it for meatballs. This little extra dough I'm gonna save and if there are any little holes that form as I'm making the pupusa, then I can use that to kind of patch it up. And we don't need to make these into pretty balls yet. I'm gonna cover it with a damp towel just to make sure that they don't dry out. I'm going to lube up my hand. And then you wanna take the ball, kind of gently roll. It's a really, really soft dough, so you want to make sure that you don't put a lot of pressure on it. And because your lubes, or your lubes, because your hand has a lot of oil on it, uh, you're gonna end up coating the surface of the ball, which is great. That's gonna help you out. And then take your thumb, push down in the center. You're basically making a little nest. And then use your index finger and your thumb to pinch the sides, just working around. It doesn't have to be exact. And it's, like I said, it's really, really soft. So you don't want to pinch too hard. So if you're lucky enough to have a set of measuring cups that have an eighth of a cup, that's exactly what you need. Otherwise, just use two tablespoons. You can eyeball it, but I think it's just easier to do this. 
we want to put the bean mixture in there. And this is where it gets a little messy. And this is also why you want to make sure that you're nicely lubed up. So just push the filling into the pupusa. And then use this hand to kind of cradle and cup the dough around the filling. And then use this hand to just kind of seal it up. And you can just kind of push with one finger or two fingers the dough around the filling, and then just seal. You start patting it down. And if you see like little tears open, just kind of rub the dough to seal them up. You'll see cracks around the edges and that's totally fine. You want it to be about a third of an inch thick, which is about that. Okay, like right there. So let's say that that happens where you see a lot of exposed bean. So see how that's kind of torn and exposed? Um, just take a little piece of dough, about that big, kind of flatten it out with your other hand and just patch it. And then you can just kind of smooth it over. If you need to add a little bit more, just do that. And the other great thing about using the oil trick on your hands is that you're creating a non-stick surface. So when we put these on the griddle, um, they won't stick to the griddle as well. So this is a good hack for um, cast iron skillets, uh, in this case a griddle, or you can even use this for a grill. You just take a piece of heavy duty aluminum foil, wad it up into a little ball, and then it, it becomes your grill cast iron brush. But since it's this hot, I'm just gonna go ahead and season it. Um, so this is a good way to do that. If you have a really screaming hot pan, you can just continue to wipe oil on it. I'm not that sensitive to heat anymore, so I can do this and not be affected by it. But like, if I'm using, if I'm doing this on the grill, which I do for grates, you can actually just get an old towel and, you know. So you want a well-seasoned, either cast iron skillet, heavy skillet, or in this case, I'm gonna do a griddle just because I wanna make multiple pupusas at once. Um, and then just lay them down. We're gonna let these go for a few minutes. You're gonna get some brown spots on the other side. I want a little bit more color on these. I want more of this kind of color, so I'll flip them back in, in a minute or two. But I would recommend like for your very first one, you know, treat it like a pancake. Um, you know, if you're using a skillet, do one, even though you might have room for uh, two or three of them, just to get a feel for it and see what they look like. This is probably more the color that you want. Um, you want some of those darker kind of charry bits on the corn. And the outside will feel kind of solid. Um, it kind of has like a, a little encasing holding everything in, and that's how you know it's done. Let's go eat pupusa. So yeah, we've got our cheese and red bean filled pupusas. We have our curtido, which is like a slightly fermented uh, spicy slaw, and then our almost refried uh, salsa roja, which is tom uh, tomatoes, onions, garlic, um, a little bit of heat, and some chicken bouillon. Oh yeah. But it has that nice sort of earthy corn flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and then beans. And then this gordita really cuts through it. It's a little bit acidic, a little funky. Very good. Thank you. So good. All right, I have to go to a meeting. All right. That was awesome. Well, Thank you, Rand. Thank you. The Adam Rapaport seal of approval. My day's made. Wow, okay. okay. Tell Pupusa. me what it is. Pupusas. So, Are they gluten free? Yeah. 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 One down. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so yes. welcome. Thank you. Just made my, my day brighter. Aww. Thanks. Thank you. I think a lot of people really love pupusas, but they're intimidated by them and they think they're really difficult. And and to be honest, when actually I started developing this recipe, I, I thought they were going to be harder than they actually are. Um, it's literally like making cookie dough. You put a ball of dough in your hand, make a hole in it, fill it with some smashed canned beans, and like just put them on a griddle. Uh, it's really, really super easy. This is also really easy. If you can make coleslaw, you can leave this on your counter and let it ferment and get really nice and funky. Um, and this is a blender salsa that you throw in a skillet until most of the liquid co cools down. It's a really simple dish. You need to try it. It's great.
Camera cuts. Sound cuts. I am so glad. I want to actually take your camera and like film you, like just to show people what I get to look at no. for All eight or nine is hours. What Random you, bits of my head. Rick, what do you what do you see when you look into the lens? <laughs> I see my reflection. <laughs> <laughs>